Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays for part 2 of this week's uh, Factorio update. And as ever we are still playing Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 which makes things nice and complicated and gives us all these lovely steps to run through for the Beryllium processing. So in yesterday's video I ran through all of the, the goings on that have been happening inside the asteroid belt. So I ran through Norvis and Agnea where I am at the moment and a little bit of Taishikutan where I've been fid fiddled with some things, fixed, fixed them up, got them working again. Um, and of course Norvis and Norvis Orbit as well as those are the big ones. So today I'm going to move on and, and talk about what's been happening outside the asteroid belt. So that's on Talos, Kothar and Njord. That's where we're currently out looking for exotic materials to um, do interesting exotic things with. So let's start off with Talos. This is the planet that you've seen me spending lots and lots of time on recently. Um, and I finally escaped last week. Um, in, but, but when I was making the videos last week I realised that well, let's just say I'd made a mistake or two in my setup out here on on, on Talos. So I decided I need, needed to fix those up before I uh, moved on too much to Agnea. So fortunately though, whilst I did, yes, I did make some mistakes, um, most of them were not particularly serious and they're ones that I was able to fix by, uh, fix remotely from the, uh, using the nav navigation satellite and the RoboPort network. So the first one on the list is that down down here, as you you well remember by now, we've got this system where we built we're building the um, delivery cannon capsules out of stuff that um, comes out of the core chunks. Well, at least that's the theory. The thing is though that building stuff out of core chunks also requires a certain amount of oil to be brought in, and this planet has basically no oil. I've complained about that many times, so I'm not going to do it again in much detail. <laughs> So in order to get round that, I've been bringing in the things that take oil from, by delivery cannon from, from Norvis, and they're being dropped into this chest here. So that means the um, the low density structures are coming in, we've got the plastic bar coming in as well because we need that for making the, uh, the air filters, and we've got the heat shielding. Now those don't take, they don't take plastic, but they do take sulphur, which is made from petroleum gas, which is made from oil, so that's another oil based thing. Now in theory we could start bringing in things like, we could bring in... Um, oil in barrels if we're desperate. I mean, that'd be a really bad idea because it's hor horrifically inefficient. But we could do that and feed it into the system. But instead, it's much better to bring in all of these sort of things by delivery cannon in the most processed state possible. The problem with this, though, is that the, uh, the core chunk pulverization over here is still producing quite a lot of copper. Um, and that's, so, so that's all being turned in, turned up here, it's being turned into copper plates, which are being brought down here, and we do need some of this copper, so we're, in order to make these copper cables, that are one, another one of the components for the, deli for the delivery cannon capsules. Um, but normally, the copper will be used up by ma in, in making the low density structures, so you don't overflow with it. However, because we're bringing the low density structures in from Norvis, we don't have this taking up the overflow, and therefore we've got too much copper, more than we know what to do with. Now, there are a couple of options here. Since we have plastic here, I could pipe this plastic, get rid of it, I could move this uh, substation, pipe the plastic in up here, have it come around here and up, up into here, and then along with the iron that's coming out through here being made into steel, we would be able to make the, um, the low density structures uh, on site here. But I thought about it a little bit, and a low density structure takes, what is it, 10, 10 plastic to make it, and a delivery cannon, you can bring in either, you can bring in a stack of anything in a delivery cannon capsule. So I have the choice between bringing in 100 plastic bars, one stack, or 50 low density structures, and that 100 plastic bar would make 10 low density structures because it takes 10 per, per structure. So by bringing them in as low density structures we get five times as much per stack per delivery cannon capsule and uh, and the expense of that, the, the uh, that does mean then we have the copper to deal with but this is so much more efficient in bringing in for bringing in the um, bringing in the low density structures this way that I'd be a fool, not, I'd, it'd, be, it'd be silly not to do it this way. So that does mean we then have to deal with the copper. So over here, I've reprogrammed the system here so that now we're letting the cop copper come in here, in here, and then we're monitoring for when there's too much copper in the chest and dumping it out onto the disposal belt along with, in the same way that we're getting rid of the iron and the stone, the excess iron and stone and coal and everything else. So it will then flow down here, come along here, and la 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 la, all the way down here to this this fine to where we've got another um, smelting machine down here that turns that that copper ore into copper plates, and then we ship that out by delivery cannon. So okay, that does use slightly more delivery cannon capsules than we would have done otherwise, but yeah, not by a significant amount. This is e easily worth it. Um, I have noticed that I've forgotten to cable in the um, the inserter here, so this will just always shoot at Norvis. Now. In practice, this isn't going to be a problem because Norvis is, always has a voracious appetite for copper. We're getting through so much of it down there that I can fling as much copper down over there as I want. It's never going to actually be a problem. But in the interest of doing things properly, 
I should run a cable across from here to here and set it up in the same way as this one. So we're looking at seeing when the copper is less than is less than zero and then shipping it out at that point because there's a receiver chest at the other end that will be monitoring it correctly like that uh, and is feeding in. You can just about make out the um, the copper symbol on the constant combinator there. That's feeding in a minus one into here, which then is being added to whatever's in the chest and then passed into the um, into the transmitter. Uh, so this will always be then be drained out into here and into here because as you can see, look at the way the copper's flowing in there we've got such a lot of it getting, we're getting through a lot of it all of the time so dropping in a couple of hundred extra every so often here is not going to make any significant difference and that can then just be pumped through into that into that uh, warehouse and then into this warehouse and then go off into into the train that you can see just pulling up there so yes lot, there's always room for copper but even so in the interest of doing things properly tm i should put in another cable across here and program that one up there's no point doing it now because i'm not going to save this game because i'm this is just the video. So yes, that's dealing with the excess copper that's coming through. I've taken out some of the assembly machines over here because there's no, there was a row of um, machines here that were making the uh, explosives. There's no point in having those there because we're bringing the explosives in by delivery cannon and we don't have enough sulfur to, um, to, to make explosives and we don't want to waste the coal on that either because this coal is quite valuable for making into beryllium up here so we want to, we want to save that for, for use there. Um, I could also remove these machines across here. They're not doing anything, so to free up a bit of space, I could take out the low-density structure machines. Um, the rest of this actually is all being used, I think. So that's that's uh, yeah, that's is all vital. These um, sulfur machines up here are just acting as a sink to take away the um, any any. Um, gas any petroleum gas that is produced by these refineries from the little bit of oil that comes out of the uh, core chunk processing there isn't enough but there is a little bit so we need to do something with it so we're making it into sulfur dumping it into the uh, into the delivery cannon chest down here and then making it into the sulfuric acid that we we're processing um up, using up here to process to make the uh, uh, whichever stage of the beryllium it is so this system <clears throat> all seems to be working pretty well. Uh, generally, I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with the way it's working. We seem to have a bit of a shortage of um, of uh, steel coming through at the moment, actually. Why is that? What are you sad about? So you're full of full of steel. You're full of... Oh, we've not got any coke. So up here, this, this coke machine doesn't have any coal. So again, we need to process some of the uh, core chunks in order to make the coal, in order to make this. So we actually, we need to start... Basically, we need to start using beryllium so this whole machine flows and we get a little bit of the coal coming through here before all of these filters get used up. And at the moment, we've got mm, several hundred. So um, five, 350. So uh, plus we'll have all the ones on the belt. So I think we're probably going to be okay there. We don't need to worry about that too much. But... It is a thing that um, is a is a very minor concern. Another thing I've done so is um, increase the pro number of productivity modules in here. So when I was doing the uh, the vulcanite processing, I put productivity modules in all of the uh, pulverizers because we want you want to get as much out of that as possible. You you've got a limited amount of input coming from these these core mining drills, so you really you want to have these things basically f uh, fully productivity moduled or, uh, up up as far as possible. But the stages afterwards for the vulcanite. I didn't want to put the productivity modules in because we were only just getting enough delivery cannon capsules out the other side to, to take away all the vulcanite that was being created. Beryllium, on the other hand, produces a lot less of the output for the amount of input you put in. So in this case, we've got we've got all this beryllium we've made, and we have a crazy number of uh, delivery cannon capsules, more than we know what to do with. So we've got plenty of those. That means it's perfect. It, it's safe to come in here and completely productivity module this all, all, all the way up as much as we possibly can, just to get a maximum amount of beryllium out of the other end, rather than having it sort of rather than having it struggling. Um, so I've gone in and I've put in lots and lots of productivity modules in all of these. I would have put more in over here, but I ran out, which is a bit of a shame because these are the ones that will run first in this at the moment because we've got so much of it. But hopefully, once we get to the point of actually using it, we'll have it'll be a bit, it'll, it'll be this end that gets used more because those are the ones that get fed first. I could have been cleverer about this, but I don't think it really matters because at some point we're going to boost this anyway. The uh, pulverizers up here only have the one productivity module each, and that's for reasons of, sort of speed balancing. Um, because at the moment, when this red belt is running flat out, these this is the correct number of pulverizers to to use all of that supply. Um, now the in 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 theory in the long run, what I would like to do, and what I will probably do when I ha when I next send a rocket out here, is put some bo um, beacons in here to speed module everything up. So if I get if I get myself a beacon like this, <clears throat> I can put one here to get those six. I can put one here to get those six. I can put one here to get those six. And okay, this one won't be then be speed moduled, um, but maybe with the, with a bit of a speed boost from these, I won't actually need that one anyway. So we'll 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 see. It's going to need a little bit of rebalancing once we do that. But I would imagine that if I put speed modules along there, then I'll then be able to fill all of these up completely with the full four. 
productivity modules. Maybe I'll even be able to get some prod mod 3s out there if we can get a bit more Vulcanite flowing. We shall see about that one. Um, but then that'll get me a boost from, instead. so instead of having a 6% productivity boost, I'll have a 24% productivity boost, or maybe even a 30% if I can get the tier 3s. Um, that'll get me a lot more of the beryllium out from all these core chunks. At the moment, the core chunks are the limiting factor. We're only pulling them out of the ground at a certain rate because that's how mining drills work. So there's going to be a bit of... Uh, we're going to have want to get as much as we can out of those core chunks. So product, product, productivity moduling all of this stuff and beaconing it as well if, as necessary is going to be the way forward just to get, as I say, maximum throughput through. Potentially in the future, we'll start when we actually start to use the beryllium, and that's why we've got such a lot of it backed up along here because we haven't actually started using any of it yet. So none of these delivery cannons have sent any beryllium anywhere. We'll need a load of it in orbit. We'll probably want some on Norvis, but at the moment we haven't needed any, so we haven't shipped any. Um, but once they get running and um, we we'll start start using it, we'll probably find that we need more than we've got at the moment. And so I'll, I'll need to go out, get some more of these drill patches set up, and get everything running a bit quicker. At that point, I'll probably need to make another one of these sort of setups in order to process it all. And I'll probably do that over here, somewhere like that, just to get it all in. Uh, hopefully fit, fit it all in reasonably well. Um, but it's, it's okay. It's, it's, it's a simple design. It's reasonably easy to expand. So I'm, I'm not too worried about that. We'll just build it up as, as we go along. Now, an interesting thing I noticed about this is I've, I've mentioned before that inserters are lazy, therefore they'll always take off the near side of the belt when they can. So that means they're taking off the bottom or the right-hand side of the belt, depending on how, how you look at it. So the what's actually on the left here is the right-hand side of the belt because it's flowing downwards. And so they, they're taken from that side. If we follow this one up, we can see up here that the stuff that goes onto the top side of the belt is this is produced by the less efficient method, the one that doesn't use the uh, pyroflux but does use coal. And the stuff that goes onto the bottom is produced by the more efficient method. We get twice as much out of this from using the pyroflux. And so this is actually a good thing, having it balanced this way around, um, because it means we're going to be using the cheap stuff or the, the more efficiently produced stuff up first, especially now to pump these full of productivity modules. Um, and then only when that can't keep up will we start using these, this one. And that's quite nice. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it seems to have fallen out that way because that actually wasn't deliberate. I'm just <laughs> pleased to have noticed it's happened. But I, what I would like to do in order to get this running a bit more efficiently is get a supply, a better supply of pyroflux here. And so that's going to mean pulling in vulcanite or possibly pyroflux from the other planets. Get bringing it over to here and then starting to process it and pass it through and deal and and make make it into into um, into pyroflux and then start doing this recipe a bit more in order to get things done in the in the more efficient way and just get as much as much beryllium out of the um out of the core chunks as we can because as i say core chunks are going to be the big bottleneck i suspect here where every time we need more uh, more beryllium it's going to be coming out and laying down loads more core mining drills putting out more power to deal with them and all that sort of stuff so i'd like to keep this as efficient as i possibly can as ever, I spent some time looking for mistakes in the last video. One of those was this belt in here, which which we all, we all saw last time and had a good laugh about. Um, this this belt unload when it comes across the yard, because I just dragged it across. Had to put the unloader, sorry, put the underground belt there, and that meant all of these um, modules that coming out, sorry, these filters that coming out here, were just coming out and then going straight back into the into the uh, warehouse here. So I fixed that because I thought I might as well. That does mean that there's um, rather they're, they're rather more dense on the belt up here than I was actually intending, but. To be honest, I don't think that matters. Uh, having lots of them on the belt isn't a problem, as long as there's room for the other things that go onto the belt, by which I mean the um, the used uh, used filters. And, yeah, if we look down here, this belt is not remotely full. We don't have any problems here. Look, there's a used filter, there's a used filter. They, come, there are, they are coming through, but they're not exactly coming through thick and fast. I also fixed a couple of the delivery cannons over here. So, um, as well as putting this one in, I put in the, the core chunk one here. Or oh, actually, no, I didn't put it in. I I, um, I think I fixed it. So, it prob probably means I turned it on. So, now you, you can see down there in the darkness, there's, the, um, there's a delivery cannon chest on Norvis. That's catching the um, the, core, the, the excess core chunks from here. Because as, we, as I was saying earlier, we're making a lot more delivery cannon capsules than we know what to do with at the moment. So, that means we do end up using the overflow here. As you can see, that belt is flowing. So, if we had any, any core chunks coming down here, there's a chance that some of them will start to overflow and come down this way, go into the delivery cannon and be launched off to Norvis where, you know, they get turned into absolutely everything, all of the resources and help boost productive production down there because, you know, we always need more of that. The other delivery cannon I put in was this one over here, and this is doing the uranium-235, except I've messed it up. There's, um, I've, I forgot to put the filter on this inserter, um, on this splitter, it seems. So in theory, this one is doing the uh, the 238, this one's doing the 235. I need to program this up properly so that it'll, you know, work. Um, I suppose I could set this to do, um, if I set this to do 
two three eight. It'll dump out the any. It'll dump out whatever's gone into it, and then if I reprogram it again to do the two three five, then at least that's that's cleared out the nonsense on the belt, and I can then come in and program this to be to take the um, uh, the two three five to that side. So. Yeah, I can go in and fix it that way. It's a bit dirty, and I've just put a load of uranium into my storage system, which is a bit of a shame. But, you know, I'm not sure I really particularly care about this. These delivery cannons are here mostly to get rid of stuff that we don't want, rather than because we have a desperate need for this uranium on Norvis. Now, whilst we do have a need for this uranium on Norvis, <clears throat> um, we're not going to be producing enough here to make any significant difference. In the time this has been running, we've made 51 dull uranium and... I don't know how much we just had taken away of the hot uranium, but basically it's, it's not very much. It's it's a very, very slow process here. We just, we've just got this in to get rid of the excess. Could have been done with a warehouse, just let the warehouse gradually fill up and fill up and fill up and fill up, and I think that's what's happening on uh, Taishakuten. But this is slightly better because it means we do actually get rid of the, the stuff eventually. We've also got, and I think I talked about this one before, we've got a, um, a delivery cannon here that's taking in all the sand and shipping it off to Njord. So this is, this works on a, there's a nice prioritization system here. So all of the sand comes in and it goes, uh, comes in from over here from the beryllium processing, uh, drops down here, uh, goes through here and into this chest. The stone comes through here, goes into here, goes into this, um, into this pulverizer, the sand goes into the chest. If the uh, sand gets to an excessive amount, then this inserter and this inserter will kick in, and they'll start passing the sand from this belt and, and the pulverizer into here, where it'd be made into glass to be shipped to Norvis. But so far, that hasn't needed to be done. Um, as a quick side note, I, you'll see you'll see that the um, the outputs from the centrifuge here are quite neatly going loop, being looped round to go back in, into here for the making sand, and then the iron can go off this way to be uh, to be made, made into the iron over here. But that doesn't matter right now. What I'm what I'm talking about is here where we're firing off the um, firing the sand off to Njord. So let's go off and have a look on Njord, where there is an absolutely insatiable appetite for sand. It's all being dropped in here, and we've got this. Um, delivery cannon, uh, sorry, we've got this uh, chest here saying, yes, I'd like to always have at least two, 200 coming in, please. Um, and so we're doing our best to ship that over and keep, keep it keep it satisfied. Uh, that then flows out here, yada, 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 we make, we're making Holmium. <clears throat> so this is where Tristan's been working hard. He's got this um, system here, we're bring, oh, bringing in some core chunks now. They're, they're flowing through at a, at a rate of about, it's probably somewhere in the region of a quarter of a belt, maybe slightly more flowing around here la 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 being made processed down into into uh, into core uh, processed down into the core chunks and the holmium here the holmium's not flowing through particularly quickly we get we've got a bit of it coming out as you can see down here it's dribbling through um somewhere down here there's going to be yes so the limiting factor is it appears to be here and i think the limiting factor seems to be just the number of machines that are uh, are available to run oh let's have a look actually now we've got yeah he's using up all the holmium right there's a shortage of hydrogen chloride the hydrogen chloride is being made over here by all of these machines, um, some of which seem to be idle. Um, why are you idle? Because you don't have any inputs. Why are you, why are you idle? You don't, have any, you don't have any water. Oh, really? Looks like there's some missing underground... Yeah, the, the underground pipes here have, um, have got messed up, so we need to have that there and lose that one. Uh, because so this this is the problem with putting in with copying and pasting without paying attention to where you put your belts, or possibly putting a belt through without paying attention to where you've copied and pasted. So you had a shortage of water, but still, the, that isn't really going to help because this is currently limited by the amount of stone, that's, uh, by the amount of um, sand that's available. And so that's why Tristan is, is desperately trying to get in as much sand from well everybody else as he possibly can, because this this place has an absolutely voracious need for sand in order to make this hydrogen chloride. Uh, in order to make, sorry, in order to make the hydrogen and the chlorine, in order to make the hydrogen chloride to keep to do this step of the processing. So whilst I have now improved things a little bit over here, that's just going to slurp up all of this sand very, very quickly, and he'll be in exactly the same position again very, very soon after. So he's probably going to need to start doing stone mining, and he's got a little one down there with a whole 24,000 stone in it, and there don't, there doesn't appear to be very much more stone on this planet. So I can see why Tristan is um, very, very desperate to have us ship sand into him. Um, this is sort of the same sort of problem that I ran into on um, on Talos with the lack of uh, with the lack of oil, and I suppose in a way on Agnea with the lack of water. Although it's a slightly different type of resource, but you end up you end up with the with these problems on these planets and then having to ship in resources so exactly how he's going to do this i'm not quite sure um probably he's going to start shipping sand in by delivery cannon from norvis i imagine i think that's going to be the only way he can get realistically the large amounts he's going to need now there is a rocket launch a landing pad over here and i'll talk about that again in a moment um 
because the other thing that Tristan has been doing out here is putting in lots of lots more core mining stations. So in this, last week, I think we looked at it. There was uh, there's a core mining station. There's a core core drill in in the middle of here somewhere. I think. Oh no, it's down here, down here. Um, and I think he'd already got this one as well. But since then, he's been um, expanding a little bit. So he's now got one out here on this lake that's digging up some. Um, uh, digging up more core chunks. They're all, as you can see, get trundling down here, going going into this in, into a station over here to be picked up by a train. And also, he's done a huge effort over here, where he's got this one core pickup station. It's being fed by one, two, three, four different uh, core mines. And I suppose that that makes sense. So depending on it, sort of depends on what you, how lazy you're feeling or what you'd rather build out. You can either drop in lots and lots of stations, one by each core seam um, or you can run long belts around like this and not have to worry about the, your, your, the extra rails and putting in stations and things um, which is easier is entirely subjective I wouldn't like to say either way I do want to um, be, ex express amusement at the uh, these under, underground I mean underwater belts we've got going on here um, this system is clearly perfectly valid because it's working and it looks a lot less ridiculous than um, it does when you do this in, in space because at least there is there is a planet for them to go down into and under but it still looks a little bit ridiculous because they don't look like they go down all that far um, yet they're obviously they must be sort of going to almost vertical to drop down under this lake and then pop back up over here again <laughs> This shows off, well, I was going to say this shows off the wonders of long reach, because with long reach you can stand on the shoreline over here and drop in your mining drill over here, put in the little bits of uh, landfill you need for the pylons and the roboport. Um, although the fact he's used roboport makes me think he probably hasn't done this with long reach, he's probably just done it through bots and stringing roboports all the way out here. But then also in space exploration, you don't even need to use long reach because you've got a jetpack, so you could just fly around all over the place. Tristan is, as I've said before, very keen on doing things remotely. So, whereas I would have, um, I'd have gone out there by by train or by jetpack and built this up out of my pockets because it's quick and easy. Tristan, on the other hand, has laid out these ridiculously long um, rows of roboports up the middle of his railways. On the plus side, it means when you want to expand something out and, and put more more of this stuff in later, you've got all the roboports in place. You can do it just all through the roboport network and the and the, and the uh, navsat. So you don't need to go back out there again, or, or build up loads and loads of roboports. But on the other hand, on the flip side, it does take forever to build out this way. Because you can imagine, once you've got up to here, the robots will place this roboport here, and it'll extend the range out to there, and then the robots will go, oh, I can go and build that. So then one of them will set off from here, or more likely, one of them will set off from a roboport up here that it's just placed, fly all the way down here, grab the next roboport, and fly all the way back up again. So these sort of extensions take a very very long time to do and that might well be why he's been doing quite a lot of work on Norvis in the last session as well <laughs> I'm not quite sure and alternatively I mean you, you can do the sort of a bit of each so you can put these you can put all the roboports down and then fly out placing them all yourself with your um with your own robots or, or even manually if you're desperate um, and that get that gives you the sort of the best of both in a way in that you then have you can you can then do do up improvements and upgrades remotely if you need to but you've done the hard part already. Of uh, you've done the slow part manually to speed it up a bit. So you know, I, I, I'm not sure which way he round he did it. But there are both there are those options. <laughs> <clears throat> so yes, getting back to um, getting back to that that rocket launch uh, rocket landing pad we found. This is also accepting sa incoming sand. Uh, it's called sand dump. That's a good name for it. Uh, so any anywhere in this in the solar system where we have sand that we want to get rid of, we can put it into a rocket. And that is what um, Mike has been promising to do over here on um, over here on wherever this is Kothar because down here he has he has a belt of sand flowing into a, um, a warehouse over here that is filling up with sand it's got uh, it's about half it's about half full at the moment so that means it's halfway to being ready to needing a rocket to, or having enough to, for a rocket to go to go out so presumably that's going to be what he's going to do in a little while build up a rocket launch launch it over to Tristan with all of this sand in it um, this is getting away from the whole let's let's ship well let's try not to use cargo rockets for anything but i think it might be a bit of a one-off we'll see how it goes so yes what has mike been doing well mike has been continuing continuing on kothar because that's his planet and he's been uh, trying to get an iridium su uh, supply get, uh, up and running so going down his list he has produced an iron smeltery here this is a little bit over spec um it, uh, at least for the amount of iron that he seems to need at the moment and interestingly only one small chunk of it down here seems to be working uh, looking at the rest of it, well, he's got the iron coming in here, but he doesn't have iron, enriched iron coming out. Um, that is because oh, he's got too much uh, in too much dirty water. So uh, Mike has a dirty water problem. Um, uh, make your own jokes here. So it's coming up here. Where's, where does this go? So there's a lot of pipe that goes all the way up here. Up here. 
up here round oh round here through where we're doing this is where we're doing the uh, oh this is this is where the dirty water is being cleaned and producing small amounts of copper um yeah so it's being brought all the way up here to be processed but apparently it's it's either not working or something ah we filled up it's filled up on clean water as well so he's got too much clean water need to get rid of some of that use it up for i don't care what um, and then once he's used up that that uh, that clean water then this whole process can start flowing again and then his iron will start to flow through again but i mean this doesn't seem to be a problem he's got um 80,000 in the station here plus another uh, 16,000 in the train and as far as I'm aware the only thing this iron is being used for is to bring it all the way over to the station here where it can then be piped back down here to be turned into sulfuric acid because iridium as you can see from the diagram here is it has a somewhat complex um, flow chart to uh, in, in order to make it you need quite a lot of different things to go into it and one of those is the um, is sulfuric acid for merely trying to pulverize the uh, the core chunks and that's, that's what's going on up here he's got the iridium core chunks coming out of, i assume yeah here we go he's got he's got his uh, core mine here the iridium core chunks coming out of it they're being processed here and that requires sulfuric acid and i think the reason that requires sulfuric acid is to remove a kind of accidental exploit that i suppose was in the game before and in, in certainly in 0.5 which is so normally, if you're going to try and mine an iridium patch uh, or an iridite patch like that stone, uh, there must be some. Irid There's one, an iridite patch like this one. If you're going to try and mine that, you can see over there on the right-hand side, it requires 0.1 sulfuric acid per mining operation. So this is like uranium is in in vanilla. You need to have some acid available when you're doing the mining in order to pull the uh, in order to get the, um, the 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 particularly tough ores out of the ground. So yes, we need, need need sulfuric acid for that. In 0.5, you could by sidestep that because the uh, core mining didn't require sulfuric acid, and you didn't need sulfuric acid for the uh, core processing. So the f that's been fixed now. <laughs> uh, you now require sulfuric acid in order to process the cores down into the um, iridite and the and and the core chunks and the, and the stone that come out of normal. So he's, he's stockpiling his stone here in this warehouse. So that's going to be need, need to be dealt with. The um, the core chunks coming down here being then being processed and processed and processed into delivery cannons and then chests full of stuff. Now as usual he's got far too much raw rare metal because that's the one we're producing far too much of in in everything. He, but he's also managed to make 42 delivery cannon capsules. So there's a bit of bit of stuff here and there available. This is going to need to be tweaked and improved, but you know the whole thing is a work in progress. So no, no criticism there. It's just he's working through the steps, and this is the step he hasn't got to yet. So um, yeah, that, that's, that's not not intended as a criticism, merely an observation. So yes, the uh, the erudite comes through here. He's making erudite. That was one of the things on his um, on on his achievements list. Now that comes around here. He's, he's yeah he's 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 been. He's come out with a little bit more organisation and, and, and slightly later tech than I did uh, with the uh, beryllium processing. So he's brought out beacons and lots and lots of um, modules. So these are all being this. This is what I want to do on um, on my planet. Get get everything uh, get everything running up and running with with beacons like this and, and just going a bit quicker. Uh, so this is yes. This is now produced. This is now crush, crushing the iridite again. So if we take a look at this, you can see you crush the iridite. You get back well. Some there's a forty percent chance of it failing and it just trying to crush the iridite. And nothing happening. The erudite just comes back out again because it's so tough. So then you pass it round. You have another go at it. Smack it a bit harder. There's a 30% chance of getting some crushed erudite out. A 10% chance of crushing it too hard and it just turning into sand. Um, maybe. And then apparently a 20% chance of it all just evaporating into nothingness. Which is quite impressive if we're being honest. Um, I suppose that's crushing it really, really hard. So you have to... If you <laughs> No, it'd be gravel. It'd be, it'd be gravel in the middle of that, wouldn't it? So, you, it's all, but, it, but it feels like you try and crush it, 40% chance of it failing, 30% chance of crushing it the right amount, 10% chance of crushing it a bit too much so it turns into sand, and um, a 20% chance of crushing it far too hard and it just turns into dust and blows away on the wind. Um, I don't know. Let's not. Let's not. Let's not worry about that. But then that's that's being fed out here. It's going into the going into storage assistance over here, ready to go into the next step over here. Which again, I say as I said, work in progress. So he's now going to be making. He's now dealing with the the next step of the iridite processing, which is turning it into um, iridium powder, uh, which requires this 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 is the difficult step. This is, so I'm not surprised. This is the one he's he, he's got to and hasn't managed to get past yet because this is the step that requires the cation exchange beads it requires nitric acid it requires hydrogen chloride so actually mike is going to want to hang on to all of that sandy shipping off to tristan because he's going to need it as well <laughs> i wonder if he's thought of that one but then sometimes you get the cation beads back you get um 
you get your sometimes you get your crushed iridite back uh, sometimes you get your uh, sometimes you get your iridium powder sometimes you get and, and you always get dirty water out so you know that's going to be another thing to be cleaned up and dealt with so there's always lots and lots of lots and lots of steps in this and lots and lots of byproducts lots and lots of um, ingredients required especially for this particular step in the middle here so that's going to i think that's going to keep mike busy for at least another two weeks there's because there's a lot that goes into this <laughs> i um I have to say, I didn't deliberately go in and pick up the um, the easy recipes, namely the, um, the the vulcanite and the beryllium, but it seems to have fallen out that way um, quite neatly. <laughs> One thing we have noticed is that so far, especially if Mark now goes off and gets the um, the, the vitamelange, we've kind of all gone for the things in our own colours. So I've gone for the beryllium, which is needed for blue science. Tristan's gone for the um, holmonite, which is needed for, or holmium, which is needed for the pinky purpley science. Mike's gone for iridium, which is needed for the orange science science and Mark is potentially going to go for the vitamin which is needed for the green science and he's also been doing a lot of stuff with uranium which is you know also green so we are we're playing in a very very color coded way at the moment and that actually honestly was not deliberate it just seems to have fallen out that way and the odds of that are quite small so yes, as I was saying, Mike has been producing a, uh, a certain amount of sand from this process over here, which as I said, I think he's going to need, so he's probably going to change his mind about shipping all of that off to Tristan in a rocket, and Tristan's going to be very upset because he kind of needs that sand. But it's then being shipped off down here, down this ridiculous belt that comes all the way down here and across here and down here. and. I think the worst part of this belt isn't how long it is, and we've, we've made excessively long belts before in the past. It's, it's how wiggly it is. Just, it's just a nonsense. But never mind. I mean, it's better than using bots, that's all I can say. And he did originally, he did briefly use bots. Uh, there was a, there was a, uh, a, a, a red chest full of sand over here somewhere. Uh, now, I'm not 100% certain whether he did that because it was the quick and easy way to do it, or whether it, he did it because he wanted to wind me up. Mike being Mike, I'm guessing it's probably the latter. He's also been having some issues with biters, so not only does he have the hard, probably the hardest recipe so far to deal with, um, he's also got the, the, not the hardest planet to deal with, because technically, um, mine of my planet of Talos has, a, has does have a significantly higher threat rating um, but he does still have biters to deal with um, and they do occasionally come out and chew on little bits of the wall so you can see a bit of bit, bit has been taken out here so every every so often we'll get a warning alert pop up while we're playing in the bottom corner and we'll all go Mike is that you again and he'll go yes and he'll head out and he'll replace the turrets that have been destroyed but you'll notice this has worked the biters came along here and okay they ate two of the turrets and damaged two more but they have been stopped they did not get inside the base this is probably just a small exploratory raid, probably from here, where they were just wandering around, having a look around, trying to find somewhere to put up a new nest. <clears throat> but so this this wall was capable of stopping that. If we put in an artillery piece here and shelled the uh, all all of the nests out here, then they'd never then it would never be able to cope with the number of biters that would come flooding in. But as a notification wall to just tell us when there's a, a biter exploration party in the area, it's actually working quite well. It needs a little bit of maintenance, sure, but it does basically work. So I think that brings us to more or less the end of, um, of what, what we've been building. This means the next thing to have a look at is the death counter. I'm um, happy to say I managed to make it through the last stream without any deaths, at least partly because I'm on a planet that doesn't have any biters. Uh, Mike did die again. I have no idea which of these deaths is his most recent one. I, I have no idea. But he did manage to die again, this time to a worm. So probably one of the ones out here where he's going out trying to sort of take out take out some of these um, biters out here that were ca that were causing problems for his wall. I'm going to guess it was probably it was probably this death here, and it was probably taking out this nest. One of these worms got him before he managed to finish off uh, before he managed to take out all of the spawners. And so that brings us to the uh, the end of your update for the week, I believe. Um, so as ever, thank you thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. It makes a huge difference to how well the channel can grow. Um, please check out the sponsor, that's treefall.be. They will host a server for you for um, Factorio or Minecraft or various other games, lots and lots of other games. Um, I'm planning to do another um, weightlifting update video tomorrow, so come back for that one to see how things have been going. Uh, spoilers, not brilliantly, I've been too busy, but we'll t we'll, I'll have some stuff to talk about there. I do have another Factorio video I want to get done for Tuesday. It might be a little bit of a push, but um, well, uh, that'll be coming out for supporters on Tuesday, assuming I manage to make it. And as I say, I, I would like to. I think I should be able to. Uh, it depends how busy the weekend is, really. Uh, there's GTA videos coming out on Thursdays, as, as, as always, and there'll be a Factorio stream on Monday when we shall be continuing with all of this and fixing up all of the problems I've been going around looking at today and trying to sort of continue, continue pushing, our, uh, pushing ourselves a little bit further towards some exotic, exotic space sciences. 
Wednesday I should be playing some more XCOM, uh, so come along there. You put your name down in, into the hat to be uh, have a soldier named after you and go out and help uh, help uh, help with the struggle against the alien menace. Uh, survival not guaranteed. And we'll see how that goes. It's been a lot of fun so far. And we're getting to the point of the game now where I'm starting to get weapons that actually work and soldiers who aren't completely useless. So I've, I'm over the, sort of the initial hump where things are just where it's just an absolute meat grinder so so the fl flavor and the feel is changing a little bit there it's, 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 a, it's a lot of fun anyway and yes lots of videos lots of streams enjoy the channel there's loads on there thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye